All right, I got a lot of good news for airdrop hunters today. So let's jump right in, starting off with Renzo. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, you know that the Renzo Easy ETH token depegged. There was a bunch of liquidations and a whole issue around that. Well, in response to all of the criticism, the Renzo team has come out, changed the tokenomics, changed the airdrop plan, and in my opinion, made it significantly better. So what have they done? Well, now you can claim your Renzo token before it actually goes live on Binance. Previously, the airdrop was only scheduled to happen a couple of days after the token was already live and listed on Binance. So that's one positive change. Now, the snapshot is still April 26th. So tomorrow, there's one day left. Secondly, they've increased the amount of the airdrop allocation by 2%, from 10% of the total supply to 12%. And in the first round of the airdrop, which the snapshot is ending for tomorrow, they're giving 7%. So they've bumped up the first snapshot allocation by 2%. And that increase is coming from the previous allocation that was supposed to go to liquidity and the foundation, the Renzo team. And then the season two allocation is still 5% of the total supply. We also got some additional information about the airdrop eligibility. So the minimum qualification to get Renzo is 360 easy points. If you don't have that minimum threshold, you won't actually qualify for anything. Now they are doing that to try and weed out Sybils, people that just tried to do this on a bunch of wallets with a tiny amount of capital in order to get the minimum allocation. Technically, if you're close to that 360 threshold, you still have time, you have one day left, probably less than 24 hours. So if you wanted to try and get those points, I guess one of the best ways to do that would be by using leverage over a very short period of time. And while we're definitely running out of time, I would say I would personally rather at least try to get over that threshold if I was even close to it. If I had 330 or 340 points or something, I would do everything I could to get over that 360 point threshold in the next 12 to 24 hours. Next, it looks like pretty much everyone is going to get the full allocation at TGE and it's only really the top percentage of wallets that have more than 500,000 easy points. They're gonna have a vesting schedule. So if you don't have over 500,000 easy points, you don't have to worry about that. It won't affect you. So that is the current situation with Renzo. They've significantly improved the airdrop in my opinion, although I do think they handled the depegging crisis yesterday pretty poorly. Their communications were quite bad. And the only other thing I'll note is that they haven't actually enabled or outlined a schedule for enabling unstaking and withdrawals. They said that they're doing some audits to enable that eventually, but we don't actually have any concrete timelines for that. Anyways, I'm much more bullish on the Renzo airdrop now after they've actually incorporated a lot of the feedback and improved the tokenomics and the airdrop amount. However, I do think that Renzo has suffered a pretty significant setback and it will be tough for them to recover from this. And I think as a result, the airdrop and the price of the token is not going to do as well as it might have otherwise. Now, if you wanna do some moon math, some people have done calculations based on the number of points in circulation and the potential value per point based on how valuable the Renzo protocol is. So depending on what you think the fully diluted value of the Renzo protocol is going to be, you can do some moon math and see how much you think your points are going to be worth. If we look at EtherFi as a comparison, the FTV is about 3.6 billion, but I don't think that Renzo is going to be able to actually come close to that now that they've kind of bungled this whole drop. So even if they're like half of that or closer to 1.5 billion, then the value per points would be around eight cents per point. So you can use this to kind of do some math and see how much you might get based on the different potential valuations for the Renzo protocol. All right, next up, continuing with this liquid restake token airdrop meta, KelpDAO has actually said they are enabling withdrawals or native unstaking for their liquid restake token on May 3rd. So basically one week from now. This is super bullish for KelpDAO and it means that there will be much lower risks of liquidation if you use RSETH in DeFi because those kinds of DPEGs wouldn't happen as badly as they did with Renzo if the unstaking was actually enabled. Next up, for the Swell L2 airdrop, I shared that previously I have made deposits of the liquid restake token from Swell, but they've actually now enabled deposits of the USDE synthetic dollar from Athena, which you can deposit to earn sats for the ENA airdrop, as well as eigenlayer points and the Swell airdrop. So now you have even more options for what to do with those USDE tokens. Although personally, I've taken all of mine over to the Mantle L2 
and I'm deploying them there. And the final thing for restake tokens today is on the mode L2, if you have previously bridged EtherFi's EETH to mode, now they've actually enabled native staking on mode, and those are two separate token contract addresses. So what they want you to do is to actually swap the old bridged EETH for the natively restaked EETH. And in order to do that, you can do it on an exchange like Kim. So you can find both of these tokens on the list here, and you can swap the old WEETH for the new one, the native one on this network. I don't think it's super urgent that you do this. And if you hold either of these tokens, you'll still be earning Ether 5 points and Eigenlayer points, but eventually they will probably phase out the old one, the bridged one. And it definitely makes sense to, whenever you have an opportunity, migrate to the new native mode L2 WEE. All right, next up, Linea has relaunched their Surge campaign page. So if you want to participate in the next round of the Linea airdrop campaign called the Surge, and you want to earn LXPL, you need to go connect a wallet and sign up. And you do need an invite code in order to actually join this. So if you want to use mine, I'll link it down below and you can help out the channel. All you need to do right now is visit this page, connect your wallet, and then sign a message. It's a gasless transaction. You don't have to pay anything to join this. So once you sign it, you'll get this message that says your address is active. Then you can create your own referral code, share that with other people. And for now, that's all you need to do. But moving forward, they're going to be sharing more details of how you can earn this new version of the Linea Experience Point token for providing liquidity on the Linea L2. And then speaking of Linea Experience Points, they've actually also launched a new campaign where you can earn regular LXP. So this campaign is in conjunction with Yellow. You can also find it on the Linea Voyage page. If you go to the Get LXP tab, you'll see it right here. So you can earn up to 100 LXP for completing this. Next up, Wormhole has finally launched their native token transfers. So now the W token is available on Solana, but also as an ERC-20 on Ethereum and a bunch of L2s, including Arbitrum, Optimism, and Base. So this was part of their roadmap to enable multi-chain governance, and I suppose soon they will finally enable staking of the W token. Now, if we look at the wormhole token price as a result of this, it's kind of skyrocketed in the last 24 hours from 53 cents a token to 66 cents a token. So this is definitely bullish for the W token. I'm still holding pretty much all of my airdrop waiting to stake it. So this is good news. Okay, next up, if you are farming the Milky Way or Milk token airdrop by holding Milk Tia, there's a current points boost on where you can earn 4X bonus points if you provide liquidity on the Camelot decks to the Milk Tia and Tia NLP pair. So these are correlated assets, meaning you have a very, very low risk of something called impermanent loss. And if you provide LP to this pool, you can earn 4X points boost for the Milky Way airdrop. So as opposed to providing it on something like Osmosis Swap, or if you were using it on platforms like Demex, you can check this out if you want, and I'll leave a link to this blog post as well that breaks down the opportunity. Another thing that I'll note here is that since the TIA N token is the cross-chain via Hyperlane version of Celestia, then you might actually hit the Hyperlane airdrop by providing liquidity to this pool as well. All right, next up, let's talk about the Puff airdrop because they released more information on chapter three, which is going live tomorrow. So we'll be able to get blue potions and blue vials in chapter three, and it's getting more complex and more interesting. So similarly to phase two, where you stake the Puff token and METH in order to get an airdrop, that is gonna be going on as well. However, they've changed it and upped the ante a little bit. So once you stake your tokens tomorrow, you won't be able to withdraw for 28 days. So this is basically a one month bonding period. And after you stake or bond your tokens, you're gonna to get LP tokens that you can then take and restake to generate extra rewards. And if we keep scrolling down, these extra rewards for doing this are going to be called blue magic token. So they're actually introducing another third token to this ecosystem. And you'll be able to use these to play games and to do different stuff in order to earn additional rewards. So it's getting super complex. All of this is launching tomorrow and I'll walk you through what I plan on doing with it tomorrow when it actually goes live. All right, next up, if you are farming the jumper bridge airdrop, 
you can now go and actually claim your unique Soulbound PFP. It's fully customizable, it's really cool, and they've partnered with Merkle to do this. So in order to claim, you need to go to the Merkle page, you can mint your NFT, and then if we go here, you'll be able to get these loot boxes of different attributes for your PFP based on your jumper experience points. So with this wallet here, I have 270 experience points via the jumper loyalty program. And so for having those, I get a bunch of different attributes and I can customize my PFP. So you can actually go through here and customize all of these different parts of your PFP. It's pretty fun to mess around with. And the more levels of experience points that you have, the more different stuff that you can unlock to customize with. So I would say it's pretty fun and interactive, and it's actually kind of a multi airdrop qualifier to mint this and mess around with it because you could potentially get a Merkle airdrop and a jumper slash Li-Fi airdrop for doing this. Next up, the Lava Network announced today some more details about their token, which should be launching soon. So I'll leave a link to this down below. They've included details on the total supply and also the community allocation. If you recall, I've mentioned Lava Network in a few of my different videos. It's one of these kind of free to earn airdrops where you just set a custom RPC. And then by doing those same regular transactions, you would always do, you earn points and rank up for this airdrop opportunity. So if we check out the distribution chart, they've got 15% allocated to a category called future initiatives, including airdrop. So I guess not a full 15% going to the airdrop, but some portion of this. So as soon as we have more information on when this token is launching, I will definitely let you know. All right, next up, moving to the Mantle ecosystem. If you have been staking MNT tokens in their reward station for M shards, you can now go and exchange those for the ENA token from Athena. So I did that today. All you have to do is go to the Mantle reward station First, make sure that you claim all of your M shards, and then you can go to this new tab called Convert, where you can convert those M shards for the ENA token. And with this, Athena has actually launched the ENA token on the Mantle L2, so you can see the balance of it in your wallet. For staking 500 MNT for a month, I got 27 ENA out of it, so not a bad ROI. And also they have another partner. So if you keep your MNT staked, you'll now start earning points for this MISO MYT token airdrop or rewards as well. So totally up to you. If you want to keep those MNT tokens staked, you don't actually have to unstake them and change them over you'll automatically start earning rewards for their next version of this as well. I actually don't know much about MISO. I'm definitely not as bullish on this as I was on Athena and the ENA token. So I might reallocate my MNT and do something else with it. We'll see. Okay, next up, if you hold a Pykenians NFT, I have one of these and I've spoken about it previously as kind of a very speculative way to get access to the Monad ecosystem. Well, there's a snapshot taken two days ago on April 23rd and if you are holding a Pakinian and not listing it, then you'll be eligible to get a free mint of a new NFT tomorrow. This new NFT is called Undeads. It's only got a supply of 3,500 and the mint price for people that have whitelist is going to be zero plus Solana gas fees. So basically zero. So if you have one of these, definitely you should mint the free NFT tomorrow. And I think try to maximize the value that you get from holding these because we don't actually know if it's going to lead to any monad benefits. All right, next up, let's talk about mitosis. So their galaxy campaign is still ongoing, but they also just launched their mainnet. Now, in order to participate in this, they wanted deposits and they almost immediately reached the Ethereum mainnet deposit cap. So currently you can't actually deposit any new assets to this. The TVL cap has been reached. They've also reached the deposit caps on all of these L2s that they had enabled, but they will be increasing them. There will be further opportunities to get involved in this and you can continue following along with their Galaxy campaign if you want to. I personally have so much capital allocated elsewhere, I decided to fade this one. But since I'm not doing it, it means it will probably actually print. Next up, if you are participating in the Manta Renew paradigm, you can now go and claim some rewards with Manta tokens for that. Although I've seen some people that claimed and basically didn't get all that much, deposited a couple of ETH and got, you know, 20 Manta tokens as a result of that. And so in this case, I'm definitely glad that I decided to fade. Okay, let's move now to the meme land, meme coin and rune coin airdrop opportunity. So this one, if you were staking meme coins and participating in it, you now have until tomorrow at 1 p.m. Hong Kong time 
to burn the stakes that you accumulated for participating in this campaign in order to earn the RuneCoin airdrop. So you have to go to the meme land page and burn the stakes that you earned in order to get an allocation. But you can only burn up to 80% of the total stakes that you got at the time of the snapshot, which was yesterday. Okay, next up, Tyco has launched yet another updated version of their testnet. I thought the last one, Catlab, was supposed to be the final one but no, they've gone ahead and launched another one. So now there's a whole new set of things that you can do. I'll leave a link to this post by Mr. Cat that breaks down what you can do. Basically, it's all the same stuff. You need to add the network. You need to get some tokens from the testnet faucet, bridge them over, do some swaps, provide some liquidity, and then that's basically it. Okay, next, the bounce bit airdrop or mega drop is going live on Binance tomorrow. But also, if you were completing the Bounce Bit airdrop campaign on their actual platform, you can see how many points you ended up with. So I deposited $12 worth of Bitcoin and I ended up with 37 points. So we'll see what kind of whale distribution I get for that. If you don't see me make a video tomorrow, it's because I'm retiring as a result of this payday. Magic Eden just launched on the base L2. So they keep expanding into new networks. Now, basically, it's becoming one of the premier NFT exchanges, not just for Solana, but Ethereum, Polygon, Bitcoin, and now also base. And they also have an airdrop campaign on where you collect diamonds by bidding on and listing NFTs. So food for thought. And then finally, the Carve protocol announced the raise of $10 million, which is pretty bullish. And they have an airdrop campaign on right now where basically every day you can come back to the Carve protocol and get points for free or for a very small fee by doing on-chain transactions on these networks. So you're trying to collect these sole tokens, which should be convertible into an airdrop. And there's other ways that you can get points based on other activities as well. I don't think I've actually mentioned this officially on the channel, but it was included in my airdrop checklist for the Patreon members. And then I guess on that, I'm going to drop this now publicly down below. So if you want to check out the daily airdrop checklist, and then I have also a weekly or monthly airdrop checklist, I'm going to leave links to these down below. It's basically a list of all the different stuff that you can do on either a daily basis or a weekly or monthly basis to farm airdrops. And here on the daily list, I've broken it down by the name of the project, the type of the activity, and then each one of these actually has a link that you can just click through to go to it. So some of these I would say are lower priority, like the social and the free ones, but the on-chain tasks and the on-chain check-ins I would say are more of a higher priority for sure. Although it obviously depends on how much capital you have and what you're doing. And then on the weekly or monthly checklist, I've made it so that you can put a little tick mark beside these when you've actually interacted with them. And again, for the different apps or protocols that I've listed, I've tried to link them whenever possible. This has been accessible for Patreon members for several weeks now. And the reason why I'm going to just drop it here publicly is because I've got something even better coming out soon for Patreon members. Probably gonna be going live tomorrow or the day after. So thank you so much for everyone watching. Hopefully you found this helpful as always and have a great day.